thanks to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. First, I built a clock that tells the time using marbles, but this one could only show hours and minutes. And some of you were joking about to try and build one that showed seconds, but it seems that I don't know how to take a joke, so I went for it and decided to build one. And the first attempt was a mixed bag of lack of reliability and a puzzle of stuck marbles, but you are not here because I am a quitter. You are here because I'm crazy enough to keep trying, and so I did. In the last video, I fixed the issue with the marble display section. And now we have a marble swap contraption that works 100% of the time. And that one only substitutes the, this part in here, the, the ramp at the end. So let's fix now the marble selection mechanism. After deep analysis, observation, and hours of meditation, I found the three key issues that kept this from working. The first one is that the solenoids weren't powerful enough. As you can see, the solenoid can push with a whopping 5 grams of force, or 0.049 newtons. Not a good start. The second issue is that the mechanical multiplexer behaves weirdly sometimes. The timing needs to be very precise. If one of these levers of the row can't move, none will. Everything will get stuck. And the last issue is, is even worse because this one was self-inflicted. In a perfect demonstration of lack of personality, I read your comments and decided to go with steel marbles. And all the trouble that comes with making silver marbles black. And those black marbles were introducing a lot of friction in the system. So when I was testing just with silver marbles, everything was working, but when I switched to test with both silver and black marbles, the extra friction of the black marbles like, brought everything to a halt. It stopped. So the first thing that I'm going to do is something that is way less painful than the alternative. I'm going back to glass marbles. I know that I found lots of issues with the glass marbles with the previous clock. I know that. And that's obviously why lots of you commented that I should be using steel marbles. But that brought the painful task of making half of them black, which was way worse than just sifting through all the marbles and just selecting the ones that are round and within the desired diameter. But there is one reason that made me go back to glass marbles that is bigger than any other one. Contrast. You can easily see which one is which. With the silver and black marbles, I, I was having a hard time seeing the numbers. I think this is going to be worth it. But please feel free to leave a comment down below. Would you rather me using glass, steel, aerogel, expired cakes? Either way, that solves the issue of the black marbles having more friction than the white ones, because both have the same. So let's get on with the solenoids. As I mentioned in the last video, I'm going to over-engineer this clock until everything works like perfectly. All, all the time? Great. Until it works. Solving the issue of the solenoids lacking power is going to be a little bit more convoluted, but bear with me because it, it will make sense in the end. When I first introduced the seconds clock idea, I played with a few concepts that could work as a marble selection mechanism, and there was one that was discarded because even though it worked really well, it required an actuator that could be stable in three positions, left, release, and right. These solenoids are only stable in two positions, so I could only do left and right. And I really wanted to use solenoids, but right now I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even remember why. Why? 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 But as I mentioned in the last video, I want the entire clock to work with a single motor. No solenoids, no servos, nothing. So I think I can bring back that solution and make it work with that single motor. So the next problem that I need to solve is how to make this red part in here go to the left, right, and release positions with the rotation of a single motor. And for that, I'm going to use a cam disc. But as always, it's, it's not just the disc. I, I also need a lever and a bearing and a, and a spring and a parallel bar and it gets complicated real quick. This disc has three different diameters. Left, release, and right. The lever has this little bearing at the end, so there is no friction against the disc. This spring here presses the lever against the disc, and this parallel bar in here with an offset center makes the bearing move in a straight line. I've been doing and enjoying this kind of problem solving since I was little, and that's something that I want my kids to enjoy as much as I do. And that's what KiwiCo does. 
There is these little boxes that come to your house and they have everything in them that you need to build a very cool project. And I love it and my kids love it too. Keeps them entertained but also teaches them about, amongst other things, science and technology. So if you want to instill in your kids or a child you love the joy of creating things, you can subscribe to KiwiCo and they will send you a crate once a month to your door with fun, handsome projects designed by experts but tested by kids. There are nine different lines you can choose from so you can tailor the experience for the kid that you love, even newborn babies. KiwiCo also offers crates at the KiwiCo store in case you are not ready to subscribe. From robots to ice cream making, there is something exciting for every kid. So if you want to try it out, click the link in the description to get 20% off of your first KiwiCo Panda Crate for babies and toddlers or 50% off of any other monthly line. And now let's get back to marble selection. One cam disc, two input channels, one output channel, one marble selector is good enough for one marble out of 15. For each row, we need three of these. More or less something like this. But again, this is just for, for one row. We need five rows. Yeah, this, five, five of these. Now let's get them one in top of the other. There it is, our stack of 15 marble selectors, and now we need 15 cam discs. There you go, 15 cam discs. Each one of them has two kinds of marks, one that sets the start position, and a set of holes that tell me which one is which, from 1 to 15, so I can stack them properly. And to make the stack, I need to put some space between each one of these discs. So I've printed some spacers. These are very special spacers because it interlocks with the cam disc and also with the next spacer. And that way I can be sure that all the discs are aligned properly. And the stack is finished. And to make it rotate a beveled gear on top that also has the matching marks. And we will join it with a threaded rod. And that's our stack complete. I've made this bracket to hold the stack. And the stack has a 40 teeth gear in here. This output bevel gear has 10 teeth and this one has 40. So this is a 4 to 1 reduction. And this one is just another 4 to 1 reduction here. And using this bracketing here, I can now get the stack in place. And that's it, a spinning cam disc stack. Now we need to attach this to this, and for that, I printed this. Now I can get this in here, like this. The disc stack seems to rotate freely after I sanded, filed, and adjusted everything. It took a while. I even had to reprint all the cam discs, but it seems to work now. So I will attach this exit ramp here now so the marbles have somewhere to go that is not the floor of the shop. Eventually this will go here. But for now I, I'd like to try every single subassembly separately. So I remove the motor from this one and I'm going to install it on this one. 
I expect this to be the final place where the motor is going to stay. So I'm going to add this output gear. And that's what I'm going to use to connect the motor to the marble swap assembly that would be in front. I think we're ready for a test. The motor spins, the gear spins, the cam disc stack spins, marble selectors work. So I will load some marbles and see what happens. It works over engineering for the win. I think the numbers are backwards. It's starting to count from like nine to zero. You can see the nine and the eight, but when it gets to the seven, it runs out of marbles because the gates are staggered. So there is only a buffer of three marbles on the gates that are on this side, but it works. Of course, there is a lot more work to be done. I need a way to constantly feed marbles to this assembly, a way to connect this to the marble swapper. So if you don't want to miss any of this, please subscribe. Thanks a lot to all my patrons and members. Thank you. And now please go and make something.